Welcome to this brief instructional video on downloading, installing, and querying the Car Sales Sample Database for InfoBrights Community Edition. We begin by downloading the Car Sales Sample Database, and this can be found at the contributed software page from InfoBrights website. Here we can see there's a description of the database, and there are the download files, which include the query descriptions, the README files for multiple platforms, and the actual database files themselves. I've created a link in my browser, and I will copy this to my desktop now. And with the sample database downloaded, I will now proceed to the instructions on how to install and load the database. We can see that the first thing that the instructions tell us to do is to create a temporary directory called car sales. I'll do this in a terminal session change directory to uh, slash temp, make directory, car sales, and change directory to car sales directory. Referring back to the instructions again, we can see that the next step is to actually move the file that we have downloaded into this temporary directory. The file is located on our desktop, so we will refer to it by the relative path of the tilde mark desktop of car sales database to the current directory. And we can confirm that the file has now been transferred from my desktop where it is no longer visible to this temporary directory. Referring back to the instructions again, we notice that the next thing to do is to unpack the download file into two separate download files that also need to be unpacked. And we'll unpack these files. This will give us the SQL.tar file and the data.tar file that were referred to in the instructions. And now that those files have been unpacked, we'll unpack them individually. As we can see, after unpacking the SQL.tar file, we have 55 query files that are preceded with IB underscore Q, meaning the InfoBright query files as well as a number of SQL scripts for creating and loading the database. The next thing we're going to do is to unpack the actual data files. As we can see, the data files themselves are actually in gzip format. We can tell that by the .gz extension. So we'll refer back to the instructions. And we'll see that the instructions tell us to unzip those files using the gunzip command. So we'll do that from the command line. gunzip star.gz. By doing a directory listing again, we can now see that the gzip files are actually text files in .txt format. We'll refer back to the, the instructions again to see the next step which is to make sure that the permissions and ownerships on all the files are correct by issuing the change own, change group, and change mode commands. We will change all ownership to the MySQL user, which was created on the installation of the InfoBright database. We'll change all groups also to the MySQL group, which was created at installation of the database. We'll set all file permissions to 666 read, write, read, write, read, write for everybody on all files. Before we set the permissions specifically on the .sql files to read, write, execute, read, write, I'm sorry, read, execute, read, execute. At this point we refer back to the instructions and we'll see that the next step is to create and actually load the database from the MySQL client. So we'll switch back to the terminal session and we'll issue the MySQL InfoBright client command, MySQL-IB. And we can investigate what databases currently exist in this instance by giving the show databases command at the client command line. And we can see that the car sales database, in fact, does not exist. We create the car sales database by issuing the statement create database car sales. And then going through the history again, of the MySQL client, we can see the show database commands exist in the history and run it again. Now we can see that the car sales database does in fact exist. 
and we can use that database or select that database for use by issuing the use command, use car sales. In the car sales database, we can issue the command to show tables and see that in fact there are no tables available in this database at this point in time. The next thing for us to do then is to create the tables. You can issue any Unix or shell level command from the MySQL client command by issuing the backspace, exclamation mark, space, preceding the command that you want to issue, such as the clear screen command. In this case, we're going to use the more command to look at the contents of the tables we're creating. And in this case, we can see that these tables simply refer to the create table statement, the column names, and the data types that are associated with them. There are no references to constraints. There are no references to primary or foreign key referential integrity. There are no references to indexes or partitioning of any kind. This is a very straightforward database definition, and that is the model for Infobrite. As you can see also at the end, we have a stored procedure being created called truncate table. And what this truncate table script does is it actually truncates a table for us. So we're going to create these tables using the MySQL command source. We're going to source create tables.sql. We're going to see that it in fact went through the DDL, issued the drop table command, then the create table command, and then it showed the tables. Of course, since the tables didn't already exist, the drop tables issued a warning. So we can run that again by going through the history. And we can see that the statements now were issued where the drop did not issue a warning. The create table created the table, and then we displayed the tables. The next thing we want to do is actually load the tables. And we'll take a look at the command that's going to load the tables, which is the load car sales. SQL file. And what you note here is that the syntax we are using is exactly the same as the syntax in MySQL, which is load data in file, file name, into table, the table name, and then descriptions of the delimiters and the enclosure characters. We'll execute this file also with the source command, which is load car sales. SQL. As we can see from the output, there were 10 million records loaded into our largest table, fax sales, in just over two minutes. We will now investigate the tables that have been created and loaded with a variety of different methods. The first is the show table status command. And what this shows is that each of the tables we created were in fact created in the BrightHouse storage engine, the default storage engine data type for InfoBright. They have the ASCII binary collation, and the number of records loaded in them are what we expected. For example, under the rows column, we can see for the fact sales table that 10 million records were, in fact, loaded. One other thing that we can see is at the very end of the comment field is the InfoBrite compression ratio. This table, in aggregate, compressed at over 10 to 1. Another way to look at the compression ratios is at the column level, showing the details of an individual table. So we can issue the command show full columns from dim dates. And we can see that, in fact, the compression ratio at a column level is actually even higher. In this case, the trans date field was compressed at a ratio of 99 to 1, actually greater than 99 to 1. And some of the other compression ratios were 63 to 1, 60 to 1, even 26 to 1. Other ways to look at the structure of tables are to use the describe command. We can describe the fact sales table. We can also look at the exact DDL syntax that was used to create a table by issuing the show create table in cars command or any table name. And here we can see the exact syntax, the SQL syntax that was used to create the table. So let's go back and look at some of the queries that we can run and execute those in InfoBright. We can see in this file that's provided to us, the query description file, that there are several basic tables at the beginning showing meta commands, counts, and distincts, but there are also more complicated queries further on down the list. And we can take a look at the actual contents of those queries. Again, by using the more command, we can look at something like query 30. 
And Query 30 has an aggregate and a group by field in the select. It's joining two tables. has multiple filters placed upon it, as well as the group commands for group by having and ordering. We can execute this same command. And we can see that running this command actually took less than a second and returned over 1,000 rows, giving the groupings and the filterings that were used upon it. Another query that we might want to investigate is query number 33. In this query, we're selecting a single aggregate field, but we're joining three tables together with multiple query conditions. Let's execute this query. And we can see that this query also ran in under one second. One final query that we'll run, investigate and run, is query number 44. And we can see in this query that we actually have a subselect in the where clause. We'll execute this query and see how long it takes. And this query also took less than one second to return almost 2,000 rows. Finally, we'll issue the stored procedure command for truncate table. This is called by issuing the call command. That will call the truncate table stored procedure, passing it the name of the table that we want to truncate, the fact sales table, and this is the table that had 10 million records in it. We can see that the query or the stored procedure ran very quickly, and we can confirm that it worked by issuing the select count command against that very table. As we can see, the record count for that table now is zero, so we have effectively truncated the table. This concludes the instructional video for installing the CarSamples database in InfoBrite. Thank you.